So what happens when you get into a fixed mindset is you're just focused on the goal and it's like absolute success or absolute failure. Mm -hmm. When you focus on a growth mindset, it's really leaning into what are the lessons and the blessings through all of life's experience. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to Framework Leadership, a podcast about principles and ideas you can use today to take your leadership to the next level. And uh, we're excited to have you here. I'm host Kent Ingle, president of Southeastern University. And I'm your co-host, Michael Steiner, vice president for communication and innovation. And we are so excited today to introduce our guest for today's show, Nick Pigeon. Nick is author and speaker from the United Kingdom. She's also the owner of a multi-million dollar business called Unstoppable Success. So great to have you with us. So happy to be here. Now, uh, let's start out the conversation. I want to talk about, you know, at a young age, you developed a passion for helping people with entrepreneurship and and with psychology. So tell us a little bit about how all that started and and how it got you where you are today. Mm, Well, it's interesting because I actually wasn't signed up to be a psychologist when I was a teenager. I wanted to be a mechanical and automotive engineer. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's totally different. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. my ex-partner that I was with for 10 years was actually very, very influential on me during those kind of mm-hmm. early stages of deciding what I wanted to do for a career. He was a professional cricket player oh. and he was seeing a sports psychologist when he was in Australia. And he mm-hmm. came back and he told me, he was like, Nick, I had this amazing session And the psychologist was saying to me that when I'm on the cricket field and I'm looking where I want to hit the ball, don't look at the fielders, look for the gaps in between the fielders instead. Um, Now that hit me like a ton of bricks because I recognize that it's not just sport that that applies to, it's actually life. And how much time do we spend focusing on what's wrong or problems or struggles when actually we can shift our mindset to focus on what goes right instead. So that had a big bearing on my career choice and I canceled my degrees to do mechanical and automotive engineering. And I went on to work, first of all, actually with athletes Mm -hmm. and teaching in universities and colleges, the science that I'd learned through my master's degree in positive psychology, and then shifted that into setting up my own businesses and helping other people be able to do that as well. Love it, love it. So as what advice would you give to kind of that um, young professional, they're just stepping into their career and they get caught up, right? They get caught up with the problems of the world, family. How can they get back into that focus to propel them to success in their careers? Mm, one of the fundamental principles and teachings in positive psychology is growth mindset. So a, a growth mindset is where we are invited to focus on the process mm-hmm. and not just the outcome or the results. So what happens when you get into a fixed mindset is you're just focused on the goal and it's like absolute success or absolute failure. Mm -hmm. When you focus on a growth mindset, it's really leaning into what are the lessons and the blessings through all of life's experience or through all of the business experience Mm -hmm. that we can learn from and actually use as resources to help us grow. And I think whether it, whether you're just starting out or mm-hmm. whether you already have a billion dollar business, mm-hmm. that's a really, really powerful principle because it can come through everything that you do. And when you look at challenges as opportunities for growth, you can see that there's actually so much gold and so much richness within them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so good. You know, we, we in leading our organization and in, in trying to create constant change and growth, we always use the appreciative inquiry approach, mm-hmm. which is that that positive, instead of what's wrong with the organization, what's great. Mm-hmm. And if you could dream about what could be accomplished, I mean, it's just a, somehow it unlocks the brain at, at such a greater uh, elevation, so to speak, in terms of creativity and innovation. How important is that, especially when you think about the workforce today and burnout and, and just that appreciative approach? Mm, I love that framework. It's super powerful and actually is the framework that is our go-to when we're doing consultancy projects. Mm, Yes. It's a really great door opener to help see what it is that's already working and what dream days or dream experiences at work would look like. 
So positive psychology takes a strengths focused approach to really being able to allow us to invest in uh, becoming more successful. So in organizations, whether it's my company, where we have 31 of us Mm -hmm. in the company, um, we pull AI and we pull strengths through everything that we do. And it really helps us to work more in our genius zone. Mm -hmm. I think if I look at the first jobs that I had in my career, I hated going to work. Yeah. It was a drag. I couldn't wait until it got to 5 p.m. and I could finish. Now I literally wake up excited because I get to see, okay, one of the things I'm really good at is activating people's potential or oh, being yeah. able to maximize other people or mm. build relationships. So I'm like, how can I use those strengths today? And it feels like an exciting, fun game rather than something that I just can't wait to like watch the clock for the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. And so how can leaders, you know, especially as um, students, individuals kind of as they're entering into that workforce, how, what do they need to be looking for to find that zone of genius, to find that spot where they are feeling fulfilled? Like how do they, how do they find it? And then how can they begin to orient their world around to live in that zone more? Mm, there's an intervention that I really love, which is called, it sounds a bit grim, it's called the gravestone exercise. <laughs> <laughs> but it actually invites you to consider your life when it's come to an end. And you're looking back and you're listening to what people are saying about you and you're listening to what people are celebrating about who you are and what you've done. And that exercise can really help you connect more with what feels meaningful and purposeful for you. And it's really beautiful when we teach this in a group coaching setting, for example, where people might not have a clue about what it is that feels meaningful for them. And then all of a sudden they're in floods of tears and they can Mm -hmm. see and feel really clearly, okay, one of the things that's important for me is that I've built a legacy or have left something behind or maybe it's I'm remembered for being kind so projecting that forwards to the big picture at the end of life can really help us drill down into how we can start to show up and make choices in the now that can help us progress towards that future vision of ourselves. Yeah, well well said. You know, at the age of 29, you have accomplished a lot uh, with your personal business and brand and have won multiple awards for your success. You know, most people are, are focused on winning and just getting to that end goal. So they often fail to appreciate actually the journey or to appreciate mm-hmm. the process along the way. Tell us about some of the lessons you've learned over the years and why it's important really to be open-minded throughout these experiences, throughout the journey, and kind of just go with the flow. Mm. I think a common misconception of life and positive psychology is that we have to be happy all of the time. Yeah. And I certainly put a lot of pressure on myself when I first graduated from my degrees. And I felt almost like I was wrong for showing up as a positive psychologist that didn't feel positive all of the time. So it took for me to really reconcile that within myself. And I now know that this science has so much depth to it where we get to see that it's not just thinking positive or it's not just forcing ourselves to be happy that is well-being. It's actually honoring and allowing emotion to flow and it's recognizing that life is going to have ups and downs sure but we get to find the good within that so it might be for example looking at um when i was bullied when i was a kid Mm -hmm. so i got bullied really badly and when i was 11 or 12 i tried to take my own life now that is a very traumatic terrifying experience for me for my parents Mm -hmm. But when I look at what that gave me, it actually sent me onto a completely different trajectory of life Hmm. where I was able to build relationships in a different way. I was able to show up and recognize different behaviors in myself and others. And every single life experience, whether it's a really simple conversation that you have with someone that inspires you in your day, or it's a big traumatic event like that, there's growth within all of it. So I think it's really important to recognize that we're not forcing people just Mm -hmm. to have this like unrealistic 
version of life where you have to be one thing all of the time. It's looking for how can we actually enjoy all of life's experience? How yeah. can we take the tough times and use that as almost like our psychological toolkit? Yeah. So we've built resilience along the way. We've built that sense of grit and determination. So now we know that we're stronger than ever before. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, and what I love about this, especially in our kind of social media saturated culture, right? So we all talk about, they've talked about social media being that highlight reel. And so most of the time you get this idea as you're looking at other people's social media, you see, you only see the successes and you're comparing that to your real life. And we know that that's, that's not the case. How can leaders set up guardrails, you know, guidelines in their life to, you know, avoid that kind of trap, falling into the trap, build the resilience as you're talking mm -hmm. about? Yeah, it's really interesting. On the social media thing, I feel like I'm actually going through that at the minute yeah. because when you, your values are in the growth space, you recognize that you're continually evolving and sometimes you can grow faster than your business or grow mm. faster than the message on social media does. Yeah. So we've actually just started to implement a new system within the business, which is the daily downloads. Mm. So we're wanting to reconnect the, the things that are being experienced in my life and business with the message that's coming through online. Yeah. So we always look at what's the simplest, way that we can do this with discipline and commitment mm -hmm. so that we're making sure that the message is actually coming through so we yeah. developed this little system in the business which is after something good happens we voice note it within our slack channel mm -hmm. and then we transcribe it write it up and then we have three points during the week where we're communicating that with our audience mm. and i think that's so important to have almost like a integrity checklist yeah for whether it's for yourself, your relationships, mm -hmm. your social media, your business, mm -hmm. to really maintain your truthfulness and what feels right and what feels aligned for you. Mm -hmm. So we're continually in the development of that, both within our personal lives and then also within the business as well. Love it. And how much do you think influencers have a responsibility to do that kind of thing, to be more... Um, yeah, as you said, integrous, have integrity with their social media channels to really kind of push back on that? It's going to be different for everyone. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it really, for me, it's about all of us determining what feels in integrity for us. Mm -hmm. So what feels integri in integrity for one person might be not to have their kids on social media, Mm -hmm. and to keep their private life private. And that might feel precious and special and in integrity. Mm -hmm. For another person, they might really feel it in integrity when they're being very vulnerable mm. and when they're sharing the warts and all stories of behind uh -huh. the scenes and what life really looks like. Yeah. So I think it's a personal practice of really understanding what feels right for you. For me, leadership is experiencing the things in life, getting the lessons and then sharing it. Mm -hmm. So I've made that very much my personal practice. If there's something going on that is a high high or a low low, I'm not just going to share it as a documentation. I'm sharing it from a place of having processed it first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so good. Lead out of experience um, and be able to create the uh, influence that hopefully will encourage and empower others. Love this conversation. We're going to move into our fire round like we do at the end of every conversation. And we like to ask just about two or three questions surrounding kind of everything we've discussed. And and we want you to answer just kind of with the, your head and heart uh, instinct. So we want to grab again some few practical and applicable pieces of advice from your experiences, as you mentioned, for our listeners. So we'll begin. Michael, um, hit us with the first question. Love it. Love it. So if you are feeling stuck in a, either season of life or career, what's the one thing you can do to move past that to kind of break into that next level? For me, it's always moving my body. Mm -hmm. So getting out of actually thinking and just shifting the energy. So I have a 10 year background as a personal trainer mm -hmm. in another life. Yeah. And it could be as simple as just putting on some music and dancing or going out and walking to shift the energy, get into more positive emotions. And that opens up your cognition, mm -hmm. ready for the intake of information. And it means you are able to find solutions more easily. 
Love it. What would be um, the best advice or the top of the list of advice when it comes to uh, helping young adults who may be navigating a brand new career or a brand new work environment? I would always recommend reading books, as you can yes, see, yeah. <laughs> and investing in a mentor. It doesn't necessarily have to be a paid mentor, but mm -hmm. someone who is a role model that you can ask powerful questions to. Yes. I realized that before I even invested in coaching or mentors in a paid way, I had a friend's mum and a friend's dad who were really influential, yeah. who I was able to go and ask for support and advice. And their insights became invaluable for me. Love it. Love it. Love it. Last question. Uh, can I close this out today? How can young leaders develop confidence in them in themselves? I love like this really simple exercise of writing a list of 10 awesome things about you. Mm. I feel like we are focused so much on doing and moving forwards that sometimes we forget how far we've already come. So I invite our students to actually get a like a folder on their phone or on their desktop, on their laptop, and just store in there all of the awesome things about you. So for me, one of my things is being an auntie. Mm -hmm. I love my niece and my nephew. Yeah. I feel really proud of that. Another thing is I won Young Entrepreneur of the Year back in 2015. Yeah. So I revisit those things and I yeah. look at what do I already have that I can celebrate and that can bring you a lot of confidence to show up in everything that you do. Love wow. it. Thank you so much, man. It's been a privilege to host you on the podcast today. Grateful for your insight that you provided our listeners. Uh, if you want to stay up to date with Nick, you can follow her on Facebook and Instagram. What is that? Uh, how can they follow you best? So Instagram's my favorite place to mm. hang out and connect. Okay. And that's Nick Page. Okay. All love right. It. Great. Love it. Love it. And for more leadership content, make sure you check us out on Instagram at Kent underscore Engel or at Dr. Michael Steiner. Or if you're on Twitter, you can check us out at Kent Engel. If you're watching us on YouTube right now, now would be a great time to hit that like button, that subscribe button, so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our website, KenEngel.com. Subscribe to our weekly leadership newsletter. Get content every single week into your inbox. Thank you so much for listening to Framework Leadership. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on Framework Leadership. If you're watching on YouTube right now, now would be a great time to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you can get more leadership content right into your YouTube feed. You can also check us out on Instagram at Kent underscore Engel at Dr. Michael Steiner or on Twitter and YouTube at Kent Engel. And hey, if you love great email newsletters, and I know that I do, you want to check out the Framework Leadership Newsletter. Every single Friday drops in great tips to be a better leader, resources, thoughts right into your inbox. Check it out. You can sign up at kentingle.com. Make sure you hop on to there. Thank you so much for listening to Framework Leadership. Take care, everybody.